Well, hello and welcome to the next instalment of the Match Masterclass, where we are targeting one of my fast becoming favorite fish. And actually, a fish that is stocked now in a lot more commercials up and down the country. And that is because they're willing to feed no matter what the weather, and they are a great sport. And that is, of course, the eyed. And I, I think uh, a few venues that have got them in, people do rapidly put them up there as one of the best fish to catch. So this is now, there we go, my first fish of the session. It's not taking too long. And as I've already mentioned, they are normally pretty obliging when it comes to being willing to feed no matter how cold it gets. I've caught these in this particular lake with literally ice on top of the water. So that is why they're so good. We love catching them and I can see why people stock them. So I'm gonna get this one slipped in the keep net and then we're gonna talk all about how I go about catching them. Well, I really hope it continues like that and I'm pretty sure it will because as I've mentioned, they are mega fish and they will feed 365 days a year, summer, winter, it doesn't matter. You can target eyed and have a good day's fishing. And that's why I think a lot of venues are getting more eyed introduced into there. This venue in particularly, they're quite big. There's a lot of them. Loads of matches are won here on eyed rather than carp. And it's a nice refreshing change to get loads of bites and catch some wicked fish. So we're gonna talk you through how I'm gonna catch them. And there's two distinctive ways that I find best to target them. First of all is fishing shallow, which we're gonna start on. They're a really aggressive fish. They'll push each other out the way, compete for the bait, and they'll come up in the water. So that is the quickest way if you can catch them like that. We'll go on to fishing for them on the bottom a little bit later, but this is a little rig section about fishing shallow for them. Some bits are really, really important. So if you're gonna pay attention to anything in this video, this little rig section should be it. So we'll start off with the elastic. I've got orange slick. That is purely because they go to about two and a half pound in here, quite big, so it's balanced out. But if yours are slightly smaller in your lake, then you need to use a slightly softer elastic. Rig line is 012, quite light. Now I did say that they're aggressive feeders, but they're very, very wise and they get used to things very quickly. So although they are aggressive, you do have to fish for them in a very clever and neat way. So that comes down to, let's have a look at the pole float. I've got a four by 10 pole float. And the most important thing, it's got a carbon stem. That is because what I want to create is a nice natural fall of my hook bait. If it looks unnatural in any way, they will not pick it up. They are very, very clever, as I said. And then the shot and pattern basically mimics that as well. So I've got spaced out number 10s throughout my rigs, again, to create that really nice natural fall. If we can make our hook bait look like the free offerings we're feeding, we're gonna catch a lot more fish. And then the hook link is 010, so even lighter again, but there's no shot on my hook link. It's a six inch hook link with absolutely no shot, purely to create the most natural fall we can in the last six inches of our rig. The hook is a really thin wire, size 18 and again the fin wire is to add no additional weight into the rig so i know that's a little bit repetitive but you need to make sure it's as natural as you can but let's talk about what i think is the most important part of the rig and that is these two back shot here above the float it pays no difference to the actual shot of my rig all this does is basically keep my line tight from my elastic to my float and like i said they are ultra aggressive but they're so quick at pulling your float under, spitting your bait out, and time you've struck, you've got no connection to the fish. If you've ever fished for F1s and you've got bite after bite after bite, you'll know what I mean. It's incredibly frustrating and I are no different. So having a couple of back shot on there just eliminates that and it helps you keep in contact with your rig. So what I'm gonna do now is try and catch myself a few fish. And then the next section we're gonna look at is the bait, the way we're feeding them, and the way that we're hooking them as well. So hopefully in the next 10 or 15 minutes, I can catch a few fish, and then we'll move on to the feeding. Wait, <laughs> didn't even need to be 10 or 15 minutes. One straight away. I think that shows how aggressive they are. I didn't even get to feed a pouch full of maggots. and. 
They will wise up to this. I think catching them shallow is 100% the way to go to start with, but what you will find is they'll gorge themselves. And if you look down the throat of an eyed after you've been feeding for a while, they'll have maggots all the way down their throat. And once you get to that situation, they are a little bit hard to catch and you may have to switch to the second method. But for now, that isn't gonna be an issue for us because check that out. They are so cool. I absolutely love them. And especially when they get to a nice size, they are just a joy to catch. So let's get this one slipped into net. Let's catch a few more. They are seriously playing ball today. I'm literally waiting just a few seconds for a bite and it goes to show that what they're doing is they're pushing each other up and fighting for that bait and we're getting real quick bites and quick action. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna get this one in and we're gonna talk you through the baits, the feeding and just about getting yourself in a rhythm really because it is quite active, it's fast fishing. Look at that, they're wicked fish, aren't they? I just love them, I absolutely love them. They're just something about them. They are a cross between a, a chub and a roach, I guess, if you've never caught them before. That's probably the best way to describe them. And what I'll do is I'll try and fish away now while talking to you so we can see what I'm on about going into ribbon. So bait-wise, when I'm fishing shallow here, all I've got is maggots. I do hook it in a slightly not a weird way, but a slightly different way is I hook it literally through the side of the maggot. So when it hangs there, it hangs as a maggot would fall. They don't fall nose first or at the other end first. They literally fall flat. So hooking it sideways makes you be able to create that natural fall of the maggot. It also helps with that ejection that I was on about because it's sort of lengthways as it goes, sucks into their mouth, it's harder for them to spit out. So this is the rhythm that I'm talking about. What I'm doing is because bites are so quick, I am feeding about, I don't know, 10 or 15 maggots, and then we're shipping out over to there. You may ask, why am I fishing so far out? But we're only just slightly warming up temperature-wise now. So they do hug that far bank, but in the summer, you can definitely catch them a little bit shorter. And then laying the rig in sideways is really important. This is what I said about the rig earlier. I can now see bites all the way down until my float settles. And if I'm getting, there's a bite, and if I'm getting loads of bites before it gets to the bottom, then potentially we need to know that we need to come shallow. And I have got another rig for that. If that does happen, I'll be able to show you LA. But at the moment, it's so quick and we're catching nicely at the depth we are. I've actually got depth markers on my top kit something that I always say to everyone that you should do. And we are fishing at 30 inches at the moment, about half depth, and it is proving to be pretty effective. So there we go. Let's see if we can repeat that process. And we'll slip that one in the net. We'll put a fresh bait on. I would always put a fresh maggot on. I know they are at the moment feeling like they'll eat anything. Trust me, they are very, very clever. So side hook maggot. We've got a lake behind us. So we're having to double ship here. So we will get this top kit on. We're gonna now feed some more maggots. With the feeding, as I said earlier, if you are doing this for, I don't know. So to start with, they will certainly feed like this. They're really aggressive, but they get full because they eat so much and they're so aggressive. And as I said, if you look down, every eye you catch 
have a little look down its mouth and just see if it's got a throat full of maggots. Because if it has, you probably want to cut your feeding back slightly because you don't want to overfeed. And that's when they get trickier to catch. And that will definitely happen as it gets later on in the day because they will fill themselves up. Now, I missed a bite there, but certainly those back shot make you miss less bites. And it is a little bit, oh, there's another miss, a bit windy. But laying that rig in and watching out for any little indication on the way down is mega important. So I've missed three bites in a row there. That's how quick these fish are. Don't be too put off by that. You are going to find that that happens, but just because four bites in a row, just because of how quick they feed the bait, how they, sorry, how quick they suck the bait in, you are going to get situations. Now I've actually missed three or probably four or five there actually in a row. So they may be coming a little bit shallower and we might have to go on to, yeah, we're getting a few indications now. We might have to go on to the other rig because they're getting so preoccupied and pushing each other higher and higher that the shallow rig may have to come into consideration. That basically is very similar, but it's about half the depth of this. So we'd fish it about 15 inches, let's say. This is probably the longest I've waited for a bite. So I'm just gonna feed another pouch of maggots as well. Only sort of 10 or 15 at a time. You do need to get a steady sort of balance between feeding regularly to get them to come up and walk and compete, but not feeding too regularly that they get that throat full of maggots, which I want to make, because that is when they become really, really awkward to catch. So let's see, there we go. That took a little bit longer, that did, and we certainly missed a few bites. So maybe the case, as I mentioned, to go on the other rig, but I would persevere with this one for Certainly a, you know, a good sort of 15, 20 minutes still because the size of the fish has been quite good. There's definitely two sort of size or age groups of hiding here. You've got these ones that I've got here, which are well over a pound, getting into some of them over two pound. And then you've got a smaller age group, which are probably eight ounces to 10 ounces. So these are the ones you want, these great big ones, they are, proper weight builders you can see why people target these rather than targeting the carp so let's have a proper look at him and show you in all its glory wicked aren't they really really good fun so what i'm gonna do slip this on the net carry on fishing with this rig for now feel my way into it if we need to change that shallow rig that's what we're going to show you next So I've just picked up the slightly shallower rig and I'm still yet to decide if I think it's made any difference in speed of catching fish. But while it's out of the water, I may as well show you the rig. Now pretty much identical if I'm honest. Same elastic, same line, same shot and pattern. The two very important back shot at above my float. Even though the distance in my last time my float is very small, they really do help hitting those very, very fast bites. Same hook link and hook. The only thing that really changes is I do use a little crystal dibber. Now, whenever I fish shallow, anything sort of below, let's say 15 inches, I just think that they make a very big difference. The fish can't see them. And it's just a confidence thing, I think. So the only thing I change is my float. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try and catch you another eyed before we go on to the second method, which is fishing on the bottom, because they would normally shy off in a match. We're fishing here on our own today, so they're probably not going to. So we'll go on to that next. But one thing I am gonna do, now if you ever watch my videos, you will know that I very, very rarely, if ever, do a blatant tackle plug, but 
I am going to right now because what I've got in my hand, a Matrix Catapult, you have to get one and try it. Now, not because I want you to spend your money, that is not the reason, but what I do want you to do is improve your fishing. And I don't know how, and I don't know why or what they've done to them, but it allows you to feed your bait so much tighter than any other catapult I've ever used. Maggots are notoriously hard to feed accurately. And I'd probably go as far as saying that it's three times, maybe even four times tighter than any other catapult I've used. And to be able to feed like that really does keep those fish in one area and make you catch more. So take out of what you will, but if you are in the market for a catapult, look at the new Matrix ones because they are very, very impressive, I must say. So that's out of the way. Let's um, see. Oh, see, I'm still getting bites, even though I've shallowed up and I'm missing them. Now that is something that I said last time, you are just gonna have to accept when fishing for ride and also fishing for F1s, they're both as bad as each other for it. And it's not the case of, I think them even shallower than this. That would be sort of my thought process if I was carp fishing and getting loads of bites that I'm not hooking because they're not so quick and as clever, I don't feel. But with this, I feel all these bites I'm getting, they generally are fish picking up the hook bait and spitting it. There you go, I've got one connected that time. Where as carp, they don't sort of do that. If you're missing a lot of bites when you're carp fishing, I would probably say you need to come shallow because they're line bites, but it's not really the case with these fellas. So there's a little thing to remember. Don't get too frustrated and because you'll end up fishing like five inches deep and they won't be that shallow. Just accept you're gonna miss a few bites and you're probably gonna have a good day's fishing. But here we go, another one coming to the net and another good sized fish. It's definitely, I don't know, what am I gonna give myself that? A pound and a quarter, hooks come out of the net, perhaps just over a pound. And they've been a lot around that sort of size. So, like I said, let's move on now. The shallow fishing would carry on being as good as this all day because we're the only ones here but we're going to pretend that it's not and in the match situation we might have to start fishing for them on the bottom so that is what i'm going to show you next So let's have a look at fishing on the deck for these eyes and how that changes a little bit. Not too much. This weather is talking about changing is uh, very odd. It's raining one minute, it's not the next, and pretty much everything's quite soaked through. But what I have just done there is I've cut in a bit of loose ground bait, some chop worms, some casters onto where I'm going to be fishing for these eyes. I've cut the ground bait in loose because we're fishing on a slope and I don't want the ball to roll back. So that's a nice way of doing it and getting a nice big covering to hopefully get a few fish feeding on. Now, let's have a look at the rig. Now, elastics and line, everything's the same. The very important back shot that I keep going on about, about striking bites, although less important perhaps when you're fishing on the bottom because they're not quite as quick. Float choice is a 0.75 gram and it's a round body pole float. Now you're probably gonna say, because this is only what is this, 60 inches deep. That's really heavy float for that depth of water. But certainly here at Meadow Farm, I don't know why a really positive, aggressive rig works better than a nice strung out, falling through the water one that you would perhaps expect. So if you've got iron in your venue, give this a try, give both styles a try and see if it makes a difference. And talking about being aggressive, that's exactly why I've shot at it like this. So I've got a little Olivet, I've got 0.5 gram Olivet, and four number eights, and they get it straight down to the bottom. And I think actually why I get positive bites is they almost hang themselves against this weight, and they really do give yourself a nice aggressive pull down on the float. Hook links, a nice short, again, six inch hook link, a slightly bigger hook, because as hook bait, I am fishing a little section of worm. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pop a little worm on there, just nip that off, so it's a tiny little section. Like I said, they've not got the biggest of mouths. 
and we'll go and give this a go. Now this is, if I could, I'd try and catch shallow all the while, but this comes into play, like I said, if there's lots of people match fishing, you're all doing it and the eye have full up and they've sort of shied off a bit, this would be my sort of next approach to coach my way through the rest of the match. And what you can do with this is feed an awful lot less bait. So where before we were smashing it in with a catapult, trying to get it to compete, you could probably catch 10 to 15, maybe even more on like that initial cup of ground bait. So you can certainly feed a lot less and when they've had enough and they've been caught and they are shying off a little bit, fishing on the bottom can certainly keep a nice run of fish together. So that's what I'm hoping for now. Hopefully we're gonna sit here, fish away and see if this is as good as it was catching them shallow. there is a, another fish on the bottom but to be honest with you I'm going to put a very abrupt ending to fishing like that because I've had four or five casts and yeah, another one here all I have caught bar one eyed is F1s now don't get me wrong I like catching F1s this one's pretty cool it's a little ghost F1 and he's absolutely wanted that worm yeah don't get me wrong i do like catching f1s but when we're doing an eyed fishing video it's not really what you're after is it? and these are i mean it's about this one's quite a big one actually for here it's probably about a pound and a bit but the eyed are generally bigger than the f1s in here so i don't normally target those unless you can really catch them in shallow water in the summer so what i'm going to do is i'm going to put that rig back down and the best rig by an absolute mile today has been the deeper shallow rig should we say so the one that's fished at let me just check top kit markers again 30 inches that was fished at it's been the best by a mile i'm going to go back on that and i'm going to try and finish the day catching eyed how we started fishing shallow with maggots, spraying nice and consistently. We've got the lake to ourselves, less lake the most of it, in the fact that we can continue to catch them in the quickest and the best way possible. But I guess catching F1s and that on the other rig, one thing it does show is that if the fishing goes slow in this particular method, how quick is that? If the fishing goes slow in the particular method, then you've got a backup plan where you can catch other species. In here, there's quite a lot of tench F1s, the odd better carp, and obviously it's like a, a huge stocking of eyed and bream. So when it's not really summertime, which it's not at the moment, we're just coming out of winter, then pretty much the only thing you catch shallow is eyed. This is actually quite a small one. But what you can do is you can literally decipher what you want to catch so if you're fishing shallow you know you're going to catch eyed when that let's say dies off or goes a bit quieter you go down on the deck and you catch whatever's there and yeah that's definitely the way to go that train is probably going to be a bit noisy for you but it's definitely the way to go in a match situation until it gets really hot fish for the eyed shallow in the way that we've shown you and you should if they are in your venue, have a few good days and a few good matches. So I'm gonna give it, what am I gonna fish for? Another half an hour, 40 minutes maybe, put a few fish together and then we'll show you what we've caught.
Well, there we go. A truly awesome day's fishing. It shows that I are definitely the way to go. Many more commercials are stocking them nowadays, and I hope that continues. It's been really good fun. I hope you enjoyed it and learned something, but I'm gonna get these lot back and we'll see you again on the next one.